Good evening. Ohayou gozaimasu. Konnichiwa, wherever you are in the world.、Uh, welcome to the 10th Okuni Jiman, I Love My Hometown Zoom presentation. Today, we will be featuring Hyogo Ken.、Uh, my name is Mas Watanabe, and I'm one of the organizers of these、uh, <clears throat> presentations. And、um, I believe we have a lot of first timers joining us today. So allow me to give you some background information before handing the mic over to today's presenters. Um, the organizers of the Okunijiman are based in Vancouver, British Columbia.、Uh, we started these presentations back in last February during the pandemic as an online platform for individuals and groups from our group, from our province with roots or ties in Japan to introduce local and unique things that they can brag about or boast about. Hence the name Okunijiman in Japanese. So, We hope that these presentations will spark interest about Japan past the general stuff you might find in your typical social media platform and inspire people to learn about or explore or rediscover parts of Japan that many take pride in.、Uh, so far, we have been calling on individuals and groups in BC to do the presentations. And、uh, for this Hyogo episode, we actually contacted the BC chapter of the Hyogo Kenjin Kai or their prefectural association, who then contacted the Hyogo Business and Cultural Center in Washington State, who have generously taken up our offer. And、um, I should add that while Hyogo and Washington h a s a sister state relationship,、uh, their、um, office also covers、um, work in the rest of the US, Canada, and Mexico. And、uh, we're really excited to work with our neighbors、uh, from, our, from the South、uh, for this, for, for this、uh, episode. So I will pass the,、uh, the baton over to Mira. I believe、uh, there will be some、uh, video presentation to kick it off. So please take it away and、uh, enjoy the,、uh, the presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Watanabe san. We'll start with a video. <laughs>
Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hyogo. Thank you so much for joining us today as we take a video and virtual tour of Hyogo Prefecture as part of the Okuni Jiman I Love My Hometown series. Before we begin, I would like to go over a bit of housekeeping. Uh, first, we would like to advise everyone to switch their Zoom view to speaker in the top right corner of their screens for optimal viewing. Additionally, we'd like to ask everyone to please keep themselves on mute for the duration of the seminar to allow everyone to properly hear the event. Questions may be asked at any time in the chat box and questions will be answered in the Q&A section in, at the end. And this event will be recorded, so please take note of that as well. So now that that's out of the way, let me introduce myself. My name is Mira, and I will be your guide this evening or morning for those of you in Japan and elsewhere east. I am the assistant director of the Hyogo Business and Cultural Center, a prefectural government office located in Seattle, Washington. I gained an interest in working in Japan and with Japan through my love for various Japanese cultural aspects such as yurukata, mascots, and various art forms. I previously worked as a coordinator for international relations or CIR as part of the JET program in a tourism office in Hyogo's Toyoka city for three years. I promoted Toyoka city, including its most famous town, Kinosaki Onsen, pictured behind me. And in my time there, I explored all over Hyogo, as you can see from these photos. So while I may not be Canadian nor a native of Hyogo, I hope I can effectively show you some great spots in the prefecture. Let's move on to some basic facts. Part of the Kansai region, Hyogo has a total population of about 5,400,000 people, about the same as British Columbia. It is known as a Japan in miniature due to the variety of landscapes and culture that can be found here. Hyogo also has a sister state relationship with Washington USA, hence the reason for our center. So without further ado, I will turn things over to the rest of our co-guides for this tour. They are all residents of their respective places who have worked hard to create videos and live streams specifically for this event. First up will be spots where you can see or meet beautiful landscapes. First, we will head over to Himeji Castle, the largest and most visited castle in Japan, where Yannick will be speaking to us for live from the city. Take it away, Yannick. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are watching this video. Um, my name is Yannick Lin. I am the CIR of Himeji City. Thanks to the JET program, I was able to move to Himeji last August. However, my hometown is Mississauga, Ontario, so I'm from Canada. Oh, as you can see, we're having some lovely weather here today. It's a little bit windy. However, yes, one of the main reasons I wanted to choose uh, Hyogo as a reason, um, as a placement for the JET program was because I did an online, not an online, I'm sorry, a summer study program at Kobe University for two weeks. However, today I'm here to talk to you all about Himeji. So one of my favorite things about Himeji Castle, I mean Himeji, is that no matter where I go, whether I'm just taking a casual walk or going to the grocery store, is that I can al always see Himeji Castle. Yes, Himeji Castle is very beautiful and it's very white and lustrous. Now, Himeji Castle was registered as a World Heritage Site in 1993. It's one of Japan's most well-preserved castles, as well as one of Japan's most well-visited castles. It also has a nickname, the White Heron Castle. And that's because the Himeji Castle resembles a white gray heron about the same time of life. Now, you may already be familiar with the castle, and that's because it's been used on a few movie sets before, such as the 1967 James Bond, You Only Live Twice movie, as well as the new G.I. Joe Snake Eyes movie, which has Henry Golding in it. There's also another famous temple in Himeji that uh, was used for the set of Last Samurai, featuring Tom Cruise and Ken Watanabe. Now, as we approach the end of March, we will soon be reaching uh, the cher beautiful cherry blossom season. However, 
it has been raining quite a lot in humanity this week, so not many of the cherry blossoms have actually bloomed yet. However, once they do bloom, it's really a beautiful place, and you can sit make at a picnic um, picnic seating with your friends, and then you can just eat and drink in the public areas with your friends under the beautiful cherry blossoms. You can also take great pictures. However, if you want to see Humanity Castle and get a bit more up close and personal, then you just have to pay a small fee and you can enter the castle grounds. You can learn about the architectural, historical, and cultural allure of the castle. So I hope you all enjoy the video I've prepared today, and I hope I can help show you a bit more about the beauty of Kyoto. As you travel around the castle, you'll notice there are these various holes in the wall. These are actually not just holes, they are the castle's defensive mechanisms, known as sama, or in English, loopholes. These loopholes would be used so that soldiers would be able to fire various forms of artillery through them. For example, this sama is in the shape of a rectangle. It was known as yazama as in the arrow in Japanese, ya. Yeah. So soldiers would fire bow arrows through this hole using a bow. However, there are other sama around the castle in various shapes, such as circles, triangles, and squares. These sama were known as teppo sama, or in English, gun ports. Soldiers could use their guns to fire their artillery through the wall. While you travel through the castle, there are many hidden defensive mechanisms, so please take your time and try to find them all. Just a note of safety for everyone. As you travel around the castle, be careful. Some of the roofs of the gates are quite short, so you, it's actually very easy to hit your head. Around the castle, you can see decorative tiles on some of the eave end tiles. These are known as onigawara. These were decorative tiles that family heads would place their family crest on. These family crests had various symbols, such as the wood sorrel for the Sakai family, or the polonia leaf. Other crests include the swallowtail butterfly, which the Ikeda family used to use. It's almost like a game if you go around the whole castle and try to find as many as you possibly can. So when you get the chance, definitely give it a try. Once you've climbed to the top of Himeji Castle, there's actually a shrine for you to offer your prayers. It's known as Osakabe Shrine. It is actually still maintained to this day. So once you reach the top, you can donate any amount of money you would like to and to offer your prayers. Please take a chance. Uh, please take the opportunity if you have the chance. The top floor of the castle not only has a beautiful shrine, but it also has a great view of the city. So when you take, have the chance, you can see every direction of Himeji, which makes a great photo. In the castle, there are also various squares in the wall. These are known as Ishi Otoshi. They would be areas where soldiers could bring their rocks and throw them down uh, to hit intruders who are climbing the castle. However, in the modern day, all of these ishi otoshi, all these rock shoots, have been sealed. So you won't be able to throw anything through them, even if you come to the castle. As you're leaving Himeji Castle, you'll come across this well. It is known as Okiku Well, named after a woman. Her name was Okiku, and she has a very mysterious ghost story. 
A long time ago, Okiku was sent to Himeji Castle to help infiltrate and kill the reigning lord. However, she ended up falling in love with this lord and then warned him of this attack. The reigning lord was then able to escape the castle. When the castle was taken and the new lord came in, in order for Okiku not to be killed for her crimes, she would have had to marry the new lord. However, her love for the old lord was too strong. And so what ended up happening was she rejected him and would not marry him. Through his fury, he ended up framing Okiku by taking a plate from a famous set of 10. He took the plate and it disappeared and then everyone blamed Okiku. As punishment for her crimes, she was beaten, killed, and thrown down this well. Now on stormy evenings, you can hear a woman saying one, two, three, and as she counts to nine, she starts again from one. A little bit creepy, eh? Hey, look over there. Do you see that thing on the top of the building? That is actually known as a shachi. They are mythical creatures which are placed on the top of the roofs. They are known to help prevent fires. There's an ancient tale that is said that if a fire was to erupt in Himeji Castle, water would erupt from the mouth of the shachi and then help to douse the fire. Over here are three examples of shachi which are kept in the main keep normally. Shachi, these mythical creatures, have the head of a lion, but the body of a fish. They are replaced approximately every 60 years due to damage of the storm and rains. As you can see, there's the Meiji period over here, and there's the Showa period next to it. The Shachi in the main keep is approximately 2 meters tall, and it also weighs a very, very heavy amount. So I don't think you could steal it, even if you wanted to. So what really gives Himeji Castle this beautiful white finish? Well, let's find out. Himeji Castle's beautiful white appearance is due to its white plastering. Himeji Castle is known for that beautiful white finish, and that white finish is made up of many natural materials, as can be seen here. So, how the plaster is made is, first, they take a slaked lime, and then they mix that with hemp fibers. These hemp fibers are known as susa in Japanese, and they help increase the tensile strength of the solution. Then, water is mixed as well as glue created from boiled seaweed. This allows the plaster to be placed onto the castle walls. Now, depending on where the plaster will be placed, sometimes they add sand, or if it's specifically on the roof, then they may add white sand to the solution. This creates a beautiful appearance for the castle walls after. It also helps prevent fires and the walls from being rotted due to wet rot. Now, this creates a beautiful white finish, and as it is Himeji Castle's signature trait, it must be maintained because as time passes approximately every 50 years, the castle walls may end up getting dirty. The white finish will end up turning a little bit gray. So that's why there are restorations every few years to the castle. Well, thank you so much, uh, Yannick, for that report from Himeji Castle. Uh, we were really hoping that the cherry blossoms would be in bloom today and that the weather would be nice, but it looks like we're a little bit early on that part. But it does, uh, Himeji Castle area definitely seems like a great place for some hanami.
Uh, so now we will visit Danielle, an American CIR out in Kinosaki Onse. Take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Danielle and I'm an American living in Kinosaki Onsen, one of Japan's most scenic hot spring towns with over 1,300 years of history. Today I'll be giving you a rundown of what makes Kinosaki the perfect destination for a cozy hot spring vacation and for your next trip to Japan. Kinosaki Onsen is home to seven mystic hot springs, each with their own unique atmosphere and charm. To fully enjoy your time here 100%, you have to try all seven. Seven hot springs in one place, free foot baths, isn't that too good to be true, you might be thinking. Well, what if I told you that all of Kinosaki Onsen's seven public baths were completely tattoo friendly? That's right, all seven bathhouses in Kinosaki are totally okay with tattoos. Great, right? Additionally, the inn where you stay will give you a yukata, geta, and a free onsen pass that allows you to enter all seven public bathhouses an unlimited number of times. One of the best ways to enjoy Kinosaki after a few soaks in the hot springs is walking through town in a yukata, aka a lighter version of a kimono. Be sure to try all of the great food options lining the streets, especially my personal favorites, the crab croquettes and the tajima beef buns. After soaking up the relaxing ambience of town, be sure to hop into Kamiya Minge to learn about Kinosaki's one-of-a-kind craft, Mugiwara Zaiku, also known as Straw Craft. Kamiya Minge is the place to go if you want a souvenir that can only be found in Kinosaki. Mr. Kamiya is an expert in Mugiwara Zaiku creations, Kinosaki's 300-year-old one-of-a-kind art form, which involves intricate designs using colored straw. Want to make your own straw craft design to take home? That's totally possible here with the help of Mr. Kamiya. After exploring downtown, you might be up for an outdoor retreat away from Kinosaki's center. Kinosaki's ropeway provides easy access to Mount Daishi, a gorgeous mountain with a Michelin star rated view of the hot spring town below. Riding the ropeway is an experience in and of itself, and once you reach the top of the mountain, be sure to try your hand at disc throwing. They say if you hit the target, your wishes will come true. A great plus to a vacation, right? Once you return to the hustle and bustle of Kinosaki's lively streets, what better way to start the evening than a quick round of some arcade games? Senta, a retro-style Japanese arcade center, is the place to be if you're looking for a great way to have some nostalgic fun before dinner. Got a good aim? Try your hand at their shateki game, a traditional Japanese shooting game where you can win some prizes if you're lucky. Thank you so much for joining me on my journey for Kinosaki Onsen, and we all hope that we can see you here soon. All right, uh, don't you just love a hot bath? Tell us in the chat if you've ever been to a Japanese onsen or hot spring bathhouse before. And a quick shout out to Toyoka Tourism Innovation, where I used to work. Moving on, we'll visit Yoko down in Tambasasayama. Uh, a resident of Tambasasayama City, Yoko is an English-speaking guide who works at the Tambasasayama Tourist Station. Let's go see what she's up to. Hello, I'm Yoko. I'm a local guide here in Tambasasayama. Today, I will introduce a city to you. Hope you like it. Here we go. Tambasasayama is a small city in Kansai area. It's located in the middle of Hyogo Prefecture. It's about an hour and a half to the main cities of Kyoto, Osaka, and Kobe. Let's talk about some of Tambasasayama's specialities. Tambasasayama is very famous for good natural food. For example, black soybeans, edamame, botan nabe, or wild boar meat hot pot, tamba chestnuts, and tambasasayama yams, to name a few. This is because our city is surrounded by mountains. So there is an abundance of clean water which helps to produce excellent vegetables and rice. And this rice makes quality sake. Do you like sake? Tambasasayama is also famous for tambayaki pottery. 
It's one of the six ancient kilns area in Japan. Tambayaki pottery started around 800 years ago, and there are 60 active pottery studios still now. Each artist is creating in his or her very unique style. There are many restaurants in the city where food is served using the plates from the owner's favorite studios. If you like pottery, you can make one for yourself too. There is even a cafe where you can choose what tambayaki style you want to drink from. Another aspect of Tamba Saseyama is its long history. People have been living here for more than 3,000 years. But more recently, like 400 years ago, it has prospered as a castle town. People are sometimes quite shy but very nice too. Our city structure hasn't changed much in those 400 years. It's very interesting to walk around and see the townscape yourself. You can enjoy a sense of serene and calm. You can also try on samurai armor and the princess gown at the Osho in Palace. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you in person. Bye for now. Thanks, Yoko. I remember that Tambayaki Cafe fondly. I even spotted the cup that I picked when I drank some coffee there. Up next, we'll explore some spots that tickle a different taste, scents, or mikaku. Some of you may be familiar with Kobe beef, but our next guides will show you how much more there is to Hyogo's regional food and drink. Now we'll have Tommy, an Australian CIR over at the Hyogo International Association, Take us on a tour of a local sake brewery and its traditional cellar restaurant in Kobe City. Hello everyone, my name is Tommy Lee and I work as a coordinator for international relations at the Hyogo International Association. Today I would like to take you on a tour of Kobe Shishunkan breweries here in Kobe City. So let's go inside through this atmospheric Nagaya gate. the front of the sake brewery building here in Kobe Shushinkan and this company has been making sake here in Nara, uh, Japan's largest sake production area since 1751 and unfortunately this building was uh, completely destroyed in the great Hanshin Awaji earthquake in January 1995 but was rebuilt two years later and renamed Fukuju Gura and you can make a reservation to tour the brewery from here. Here is Kobe Shushinkan's restaurant, Sakabayashi. Let's go inside. And here at Sakabayashi, they serve local seasonal vegetables, handmade tofu, uh, and other dishes, along with their original sake, which can only be tasted at the brewery. And today, I also wanted to introduce to you Hyogo's famous dish, Kobe beef. So, the chef at Sakabayashi has added a special dish to my lunch today. Um, today I'm having the Sui Meizen lunch, which is limited to only... Okay, so here we have the Sui Meizen lunch. It's consisted of three layers. This is the first layer. And this is the second layer. And this is the third layer. And everything seems to be very beautifully arranged and everything looks absolutely delicious and I can't wait to try it. So first here we have the local seasonal vegetables and um, next is some smoked duck, some puffer fish skin and some sea bream uh, cured in kombu. And this is the steamed egg custard which is a very traditional Japanese dish. Moving on we have um, some salmon here and it's been it's been deep fried um, in some rice cake, which makes it really, really crispy. And finally, this is a, a steam dish, which is, uh, it's, it's, um, it's kind of like a crab dumpling and it, it, it looks really, really juicy. It looks really nice. So I, I, I can't wait to eat this. So let's start with a toast. And this is 
Fukuju Junmai Kinjo and this sake has been served at the annual Nobel Prize function for many years. Cheers everyone. It's, it, this, this sake is um, it's very nice. It, it's very refreshing and uh, very easy to drink. Now let's try the Kobe beef. Juicy and tender, it's, and it's very soft. We have Tomei Gura, and today we have Chinza here with us today to guide us inside the store. Let's go inside. What's this? These are uh, sake leaves, butter cookies, and they are made in collaboration with Olympia Iwaya, which is a center for disabled, uh, support disabled people. They prepare the cookies uh, with our uh, cookies. It looks really, really good. It looks really, really delicious. Nice. Butter cookies. What she saw. So many varieties. Thanks, Tommy. That sure was an informative tour. Let us know in the chat if you've tried sake, and if you have, which is your favorite. Next, we'll be moving back up north to Toyoka City, where Adam and Shinobu will introduce us to their friend's seafood shop. Adam from Canada and Shinobu, native to Toyoka, are a couple that live right by the Sea of Japan on the outskirts of the city. Let's check out their friend's shop. Hello and greetings from Kinosaki Onsen. Uh, I'm Adam from Canada and this is Shinobu from Japan. We live here, we live down the river where they catch the Matsubagani crab. It's delicious. Let's go and get some. Okay, here we are at the Tsuyama fishing port, Tsuyama Gani. I'm so excited about this because, you know, I grew up in Canada eating crab, but it's not real crab. I never saw the real thing until I came to Japan. Can't wait. 
So here we are at our friend's seafood shop and this is the season of the crab. Actually, the season is almost finished. It's March now. The canny season is November 6th till March 20th. Just in time. Yeah. All right. Mr. Okesho. Hello, hello. Look at all of this beautiful crab. What do the different tags mean? Ow. Tsuyamako. Tsuyama. Our place. Midori. Eh. Kimidori. Kasumi. Pink. Shibayama. Which one's the best? I got pretty sweet. So these crab are still alive, very fresh. But I wonder, is it dangerous? Do they bite or pinch you? かまれたことはないですね。でも挟まれたことはあります。ああ。ゴムしてるから挟まれないけど、挟まれたことは何度も何度もあります。痛い。痛い。めっちゃ痛い。めっちゃ痛い。So look at this one. This is the most expensive one. How about five hundred dollars Canadian? Why is this one so special? まず大きい、でかい。で、カニの質、カニの水まりもすごい。Can I how do I hold it? Am I the next? Wow. Oh, it's heavy. Mm. How oh, many oh. people can eat this crab? I'm afraid I'm going to break it. That's a $500 crab. Yeah. I don't want to drop it. <laughs> it's so precious. Okay, so I hope you can come one day to Kinosaki and try the awesome crab. Yeah. Come on. Thank you for that interesting tour. One of my personal favorite ways to eat crab is sashimi style. Let us know in the chat if you've tried sashimi, crab, or otherwise before. Next will be some fun and games as we look at one place where visitors can play or asobu. We'll now be hearing from Scott over on our over in Awaji Island. Hold on, what is that behind him? Is that Godzilla? I guess we'll have to take a look to find out. Hello everyone, I'm here at Nijigen no Mori. Nijigen no Mori is Japan's first interactive animation theme park and it was launched with integrated themes of nature and 2D content such as manga, anime, and games in the Hyogo Prefectural Awaji Island Park. Let's go check it out. Wow, how amazing. This is the world's largest Godzilla with a total length of around 120 meters. It has appeared on Awaji Island in the area which reproduces the world of Godzilla. Participants will become members of the Nation Awaji Island Institute of Godzilla Disaster by taking part in the zip line and shooting game attractions, as well as enjoying the world's first permanent Godzilla museum, theater, and Godzilla-inspired menu. Let's go see more. And this is the theater that shows what happened when Godzilla came to Awaji. Also, participants become members of the Nation Awaji Island Institute Godzilla Disaster and defend when Godzilla awakens. This is the zip line to conduct surveillance activities of Godzilla while Godzilla has been stopped. After wearing a specialized harness, the participants will proceed to two courses. 
Here I go! We recommend the Internal Invasion course, 162 meters to get closer to Godzilla's interior, and the External Inspection course, 152 meters, to approach and observe Godzilla, as well as to enjoy the thrill of its colossal power and imposing life-size presence. Oh my gosh, that was so crazy, and I went so fast into Godzilla's mouth. Okay, this is the shooting game to destroy the cells scattered on the body of Godzilla with a specialized gun. When the participants are hit by Godzilla's cells, points are deducted. So it's important to aim for a high score while avoiding attacks. And this is the world's first permanent Godzilla museum. They have authentic Godzilla suits like these ones here. And over here, we have the Battle of Tokyo Station, which was also used during Shin Godzilla in 2016, the CG movie production. The museum also includes about 100 kaiju, which are monsters used in successive Godzilla works that are indispensable to Godzilla movie production. So please come check out Nijigen no Mori and the Godzilla attraction. We are looking forward to seeing you soon. Yay! That whole experience not only looks amazing, but is amazing. I've done it once myself and it was a lot of fun. So speaking of experiences, now we're going to look at unique experiences that visitors to Hyogo can try. We will check out a video back in Kinosaki Onsen at a temple where guests can try Zen meditation. So this beautiful garden is Hale Sansui in Japanese. It expresses uh, rivers and mountains using small rocks. That Zen meditation looked very relaxing. And yes, that was me in the video. <laughs> um, so next, we'll be moving on to some folks showing us their daily lives in Hyogo. First up is Stan, a Canadian-born professor who works at Konan University. He, along with his wife and son, will show us around their favorite spots in Ashia and Akashi. Let's check it out. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Stan Kirk and this is my wife Masako and my son Tak. And we live in Ashia in Hyogo and I, I'm a university teacher at uh, Konan University in Kobe. And uh, today, ta actually the real member, Japanese Canadian member of our family is Tak. So we're going to show you some of his favorite places. This is Ashiagawa, and as you can see, it's rather barren and dry in the winter time, but in the spring and summer, it gets very lush with vegetation. Tak enjoys coming here uh, to catch minnows or insects or watch birds or just cool his feet on a hot summer day. If you look in the background, there's a small mountain. That's where the waterfall is, and that's where we're going to go next. Now we're standing in front of a tea house on our way up to the falls. We're about uh, two or three minutes from the falls. We often stop here for a snack or a drink or something and we and Tack are going to start walking further up the hill here and we'll soon be at the falls. 
Okay, now we're almost there. As you can see, there's a, one of those ubiquitous hanbaiki or uh, vending machines. They're everywhere. And even in a place like this. And here's the falls. Right now, the water level is quite low, but still very charming. And we often come up here. We're now at the entrance of Akashi Castle, and you can see a wall and part of the ruin, castle ruins in the background. Okay, now we've entered the castle park grounds, and as you can see, there's not very much left of the castle itself, uh, but it's a very wide uh, area here full of trees and greenery, and I've heard there's over a thousand cherry trees in this area, so it's very popular for cherry blossom viewing. In the spring and on a typical weekend people come here with their kids and play as you can see in the background. We'll now go to the fish market. We're now in front of the entrance to the Akashi fish market. It's called Uonotana which literally means fish shelf and it's famous for Thai uh, or to sea bream and also for octopus called taco in Japanese. Uh, this fish market has been here for about 400 years and is still quite active so we're gonna go inside and uh, see what's happening there. Now we're in the fish market at an uh, octopus uh, stall and there's, you can see they're selling various types of octopus and shellfish and so on. And this okay. is what we bought. <laughs> see, an octopus and the okay. uh, pack is eating the sample here. It's really good. Okay, we're now in a small shop that serves uh, taco and they specialize in what's called akashi taco and it's a kind of uh, taco baked in dough and I'll take a show, Nasuko will show us what it looks like. Okay, and so tack, how is it? Is it good? Good. Okay, well we hope you enjoyed uh, visiting Ashia and Akashi with us and if you ever do come to Japan Please visit Hyogo. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, Stan. That octopus looked great. Akashi takoyaki, that is, the takoyaki served in a broth, is definitely unique. Let us know in the chat if you like takoyaki, whether it be the regular Osaka style or otherwise. And now we'll have Jennifer, a teacher at the Canadian Academy in, Canadian Academy in Kobe, show us around where she lives. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm from Vancouver in Canada and I'm currently living and working in Kobe. I'm really excited to be able to show you around this city that I've been living in. Um, I'm standing here on Roko Island, um, which is one of the two human-made islands in Kobe. This one's on the east side of Kobe, um, closer to Osaka. It was built in the 1980s and people began to live here from about the 1990s. Right behind me here is what we call on Roko Island the River Mall. And in the summer months, um, they're the water is packed with kids playing and splashing around and all of the restaurants serve food out on the River Mall. So this has been really a wonderful place to grow, have my kids grow up. Like many Japanese family, we live in a very compact apartment um, in Kobe City. That's my husband, Atsushi. Say hello. Hi, konnichiwa. And this is our living quarters. My son, what you doing? I'm making toast. <laughs> My kitchen, almost everything I eat with is tamba pottery. Right here in Hyogo Prefecture. Beautiful greens, blues, grays. So I enjoy all my dishes that I eat on now. And outside on my balcony, a little more pottery. This is my view from my balcony of Roko Island. And we can see all the way over to Osaka and to Kansai Airport. This is where I work. Again on Roko Island. And my boys are playing soccer in there, two of them. This is my son playing at school on the field. Hey Eric, how are you? I'm good. 
What's the score? Uh, three to one. Okay, have a good game. This is Port Island, the second human-made island in Kobe, and this one is directly south of downtown, the Sanomia area. Um, Port Island is known more for its hospitals and its research centers, um, but it has a lot of other things too, including an airport, Kobe Airport, um, a zoo, and even a skating rink. From Port Island, you get one of the best views of the city, kind of gives you an overall look at what the landscape is like. Um, here we're looking at downtown Kobe and Motamachi and Harborland area with the hotels and a Ferris wheel and parks. And then of course, as you scan out, you see a lot more of the industry. The ships come in and out to pick up goods and drop off goods. And pretty soon we're gonna have a gorgeous sunset. Have a look at this view. This is amazing. On the weekends, I often come downtown San Nomia area. To the north are all the restaurants and the nightlife for the evenings. But right now I'm on the south side, which is where all the shopping is. <laughs> okay, we just finished dinner and this is one of our favorite places to come and walk around. This is American Park downtown. Uh, what, behind us is the B Kobe side. Um, <laughs> Usually in the day there's a ton of people lined up to get their pictures but we're here on a Tuesday night so there's almost no one here and we're here for the light show on the port tower where they're doing construction at the moment. All right, thanks, Jennifer. We love seeing inside your home and the Port Tower light show was fantastic. Now we'll be heading back to Yannick for another live view of the Himeji Castle. And since we're running a little short on time, we'll take maybe one or two questions. But first, take it away, Yannick. All right, everyone. I am back here at Himeji Castle. Yes, as you can see, um, the castle is there. Right now we are in the Bizen Bailey. Um, it is an area of the castle you will get when you are leaving, uh, you will get to see before you leave the castle. From here, you can get an amazing view of the city. Yes, so Himeji Castle is only approximately 15 minutes from the railway stations by foot. So it's very easy to get here if you ever visit. Uh, Himeji Station. Now, one last thing I'd like to show everyone is that is that many character, uh, many towns in Japan have mascots or little characters, and this is Himeji's. This is one of Himeji's. I received this as a gift from the mayor. Uh, her name is Shiro Maruhime, which is loosely translated into White Ball Princess. Yes. And her attire shows many iconic things about Himeji. For example, her hat is the castle. She has cherry blossom hairpins and her dimples are in the shape of mochi dumplings. Some of the hobbies she likes to do is she likes to drink tea as well as walk around the castle grounds. If you ever come to Himeji and want to bring a piece of Himeji back home to you, your family or your friends, the gift shop uh, outside at the end of Himeji Castle has this character available, as well as many other things. You can get this toy in different sizes. You can get bookmarks, sweets, or even jigsaw puzzles. So yes, if you stop by Himeji Castle, please take a chance to enjoy everything there is to offer. Now I will give it back to you, Mira. All right, thank you, Yannick. And I'm so sorry that it's so windy, over, windy and rainy over there today as you are broadcasting live. Um, oh, it's since, okay. <laughs> um, and since we're running a bit short on time, we'll take a look at the chat and answer a few questions. Oh, it looks like we got Sounds one fun. just now. Um, are there guided tours in English at the castle, at Himeji Castle? Himeji Castle, yes, there are English guides available as well as if you go to the gift shop once you've visited the castle, if there isn't anything you're, um, if there's anything you're a bit unclear about, 
um, we have English signboards as well. So many things uh, will be readily uh, readable for you, as well as you can purchase uh, an English guide. And lastly, we have guidebooks available that have many, um, that speak about many features of the castle, the past lords, and even some of the things I wasn't able to cover today, such as the castle family crests. Great, glad to hear that there are English tours as the uh, as the castle is very big and it's easy to just be overwhelmed by all that there is. So oh, it's yeah. great to hear that mm. there are tours. Um, I'm looking through the questions. I saw way at the beginning, there was a question about uh, Fukuju Sake, um, which Tommy showed us and if that was available in Canada. I will have to get back to you on that one, but any questions that we do not answer uh, today, we can um, email you um, after the uh, event and let you know. Let's see, I'm looking to see if there may be one more question we can answer, but it looks like some have been answered already. Well, can I, can I just hop in? Oh, sure, yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, that, uh, this is Junko Kawai of Japan Canada Kai, and that, uh, I'm waiting your questions. But one thing I'd like to tell you is that uh, not only that a tourist places or taste, we have a highly technical uh, places from west of Kyogo to Port Island, as Jennifer told, that uh, we have a huge radiation sy system in, in Harimar and Spring 8, and also that the Nayutor, that the uh, telescope it's one of the best in the world. And also that, that the new part of that uh, Port Island is highly medical and physics and that uh, all, everything is done by that Rikagaku uh, Ken Kyushio. And that, that is that uh, Dr. Honjo of the Nobel Prize. Uh, she did, he did a lot by Rikagaku Ken Kyushio. And we have that uh, uh, Canadian uh, Calgary lady from Calgary is working at the Rikagaku Kenkyu Show. I think that she's here, Hiragasan, and she's doing a really good job in that, uh, you know, the uh, Japan's famous Rikagaku Kenkyu Show, that uh, research section. So I'd like to just put, add that there. Uh, Kyogo has such a nice, highly technical places all over in Kyogo. Thank you. Any questions I could answer from Kobe, Japan, Kyogo? Great. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Kawai Sang. And yeah. if any, if any other questions come about, we'll be sure to direct them to you after the event. But um, as uh, as it is already uh, eight o'clock at least here on the West Coast, um, I would like to uh, turn things over to uh, Miki Takabayashi, a member of the uh, Okunijiman Organizing Committee and the director of the uh, Japan Canada Chamber of Commerce. And please stay tuned for after her, um, her little speech because we'll have some fun announcements afterwards. Thank you, Mira. It was an absolutely fantastic and informative presentation. I enjoyed the many faces of Hyogo. Good evening, everyone. My name is Miki Takabayashi. I'm greatly honored to be here tonight to provide a concluding comments on behalf of JCCOC. JCCOC was established in 2003. And since the time Sami Takahashi became uh, um, the president, we've been strongly promoting the connection of Canada with Japan through businesses, culture, education, and tourism. Connecting us with others makes us more resilient and innovative. 
so we can have wider options and possibilities to make the world a little more peaceful and sustainable. I would like to express our gratitude to the coordinators and presenters tonight. Mr. Naoto Horita, the president of BC, British Columbia chapter of the Hyogo Kenjinkai. Thank you for initiating contact with Ms. Junko Kobayashi. Ms. Junko Kobayashi, she's the executive director of Hyogo Business Cultural Center in Washington State, HBCC. Junko, without your tireless coordination, help, assistance, and leadership, we would not have had today's presentation. Ms. P Mira Pomerantz, the assistant director of HBCC. Mira, thank you so much for your leadership in assisting Junko and leading and guiding the presenters in Hyogo. There were so many of them today. I also want to extend my appreciation to the nine presenters tonight. You are all amazing presenters connecting Hyogo with the audience. Yannick Lin, Daniel Leville, Yoko Sa Sashigane, Tommy Lee, Toyo Oka Tourism Innovation Video Production Team, Adam Crosby, Shinobu Miyata, Scott Matsumoto, Stan Clark, Jennifer Shirota. I really appreciate your time, interest, passion, and effort. Thanks to the audience who supported us too. You were valuable connectors to go beyond our borders. Last but not least, I sincerely appreciate the Okunijiman Organizing Committee and I give credit to their contribution. Together, we achieved this incredible event tonight. So let's keep connecting. We are currently planning to feature Iwate, Nagano, Nagano, Fukuoka, Osaka, Okinawa this year. Please stay tuned. We are recruiting presenters as well. So please contact us and show us your proud hometowns. Actually, tomorrow we will have the Vancouver Asahi and Wakayama Towing High School 100th Friendship Anniversary event online. So uh, yeah. Please join us and contact us if you are interested in. Have a good night and see you next time. Thank you very much, Mira. All right, thank you, Takabayashi-san. Thank you so much for joining us here today to explore Hyogo Prefecture with us. We hope that you will have the chance to visit the prefecture in the future. We would like to thank the Okunijiman, I Love My Hometown Organizing Committee for allowing us to coordinate and co-sponsor this event. We would also like to thank the Japan-Canada Chamber of Commerce for co-sponsoring co with us and providing their support. And of course, we'd like to thank all of the co-guides and others who took the time to create these videos and live streams for us today. For those who would like to rewatch this event or send it to their friends, we will be uploading the recorded video on our YouTube page uh, shortly. And for those who are local to Seattle and the West Coast, uh, please be sure to visit us at the Seattle Cherry Blossom Festival from April 8th to 10th for more travel information, a Himeji, ca uh, Himeji Castle backdrop photo shoot, and a meeting with our mascot Habaton, as well as some free sake sampling. And additionally, please be sure to fill out our survey that will be sent to you by email after the event for a chance to receive some Hyogo and Kansai travel pamphlets. Thank you all again so much for attending and goodbye for now. <laughs>